where she sort of really rolled out this populist message. The first one was about, you know, cutting prices and, and making housing more affordable and, and you know, tax credits and things like that. The second one was about investing in small businesses and trying to sort of uh, tenfold increase the, the tax um, breaks for small businesses. And then this one in this speech, it was also partly trying to describe her as a capitalist. And that comes mm -hmm. after uh, former President Donald Trump has really criticized her for for being a socialist. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined today by White House reporter Naomi Lim. Naomi, Vice President Harris gave a big economic speech. You were there. What were some of the takeaways? Well, some of the takeaways is that her economic policies are very similar to President Joe Biden's, which isn't a sort of shock and awe development at this stage in the campaign. The things that came out that were new yesterday in Pittsburgh, or in, in Pittsburgh, I should say, were um, that she's uh, wanting to really uh, invest in domestic manufacturing, particularly advanced manufacturing, from bio, um, biotechnology to aerospace. That's what she wants to see the country kind of, you know, invest in, particularly as we try to compete with China. Mm -hmm. uh, to get there, she is sort of recommending hundred billion dollars in tax credits. Mm -hmm. The other thing that she's trying to do is double the amount of apprenticeships that are currently registered across the country. So that's something that she's seeing. She m made these remarks in sort of the background of US Steel, uh, which is a very important industry and a very important union for her in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously a critical state for her campaign. Sure. Um, but it comes across, uh, or it comes after sort of two other former, uh, sort of two other previous speeches where she sort of really rolled out this populist message. The first one was about, you know, cutting prices and, and making housing more affordable and, and mm -hmm. you know, tax credits and things like that. The second one was about investing in small businesses and trying to sort of uh, tenfold increase the, the tax um, breaks for small businesses. And then this one in this speech, it was also partly trying to describe her as a capitalist. And that comes mm -hmm. after uh, former President Donald Trump has really criticized her for or being a socialist. He's called her even a communist. Co communist a as well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sort of um, coming off of what her father um, does as, like a, as a left leaning economist. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really something that she really underscored during the speech. And it's, it comes off the back of um, some of her campaign aides meeting with Wall Street executives just to really kind of uh, grease that relationship. She has like reasonable relationships with them from her Silicon Valley ties. Mm -hmm. She's obviously from San Francisco, um, but I think really just after uh, sort of beating um, uh, corporations for their role in price gouging, I think mm -hmm. she's trying to sort of extend that olive branch as well. Sure. So you mentioned the commonalities between Harris and Biden on economic policy, but it isn't some of this an effort to sort of, at least branding-wise, differentiate herself from Biden and the Biden economic record? And I think a lot of it too is it's a, a little bit more um, on the delivery as opposed to the substance. A lot of it is about uh, we feel your pain. Like in, in, in one of the sections in the speech she sort of says, you know, you know it and I know it that prices are currently too high. Um, and so I think that is something, the message that maybe they think as her being a new candidate is something that they can kind of separate her from the incumbency of Biden, even mm -hmm. though he, she's part of the administration. So Harris rolled out another policy position this week. What was it? Uh, it's not again. It's not, not something new. This is something that she brought up in 2022. But it's her position on the Senate filibuster, which all is all of these things are, are new again. Though. <laughs> exactly, um, and so it, that's a fancy word for basically Senate uh, chamber rules, where you know it really. Uh, sort of underscores the importance of the majority. So it requires sort of 60 votes to pass lots of legislation. Right. Um, there's currently a carve out for the filibuster for passing judges, which is a simple mm -hmm. majority of 51. Uh, Harris this week announced that she would want to have the filibuster eroded for things like abortion access and to sort of restore Roe versus Wade, all those protections for um, abortion uh, access and I think that it was really interesting because even earlier in the administration Biden and her also came out for having a carve out for voting rights so it would be right. interesting to get her on the record to see whether she, that's something that she would uh, support because I guess she might say that she wants the filibuster in this or filibuster in this section and filibuster not in this section but to get where to get sort of the nitty gritty would be important for her. Like another example is during the campaign, she suggested that she would like the, to get rid of the filibuster for the Green New Deal mm -hmm. and to see if she can, if she says that this time around uh, would be something that uh, would be important, I think, to voters. A filibuster for me, but not for thee. Thank you, Naomi.
You can read Naomi and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com. <laughs>